Welcome to video number three for Mrs. Fury's Chapter 28, Progressivism and the Republican Roosevelt. And we're going to talk about Teddy Roosevelt and his impact on the United States and on progressivism. The progressivism spirit touched President Roosevelt and his square deal embraced the three C's, control of the corporations, consumer protection, and the conservation of the United States natural resources. In 1902, a strike broke out in a coal mine in Pennsylvania. Some 140,000 workers demanded a 20% pay increase for the reduction of the workday to only nine hours. The owners refused to negotiate and the lack of coal was getting to the freezing schools, hospitals, and factories during that winter. Teddy Roosevelt threatened to seize the mines and operate them with federal troops if he had to in order to keep it open and to keep the coal coming to the people. As a result, the workers got a 10% pay increase and a nine-hour workday, but their union was not officially recognized as a bargaining agent. In 1903, the Department of Commerce and Labor was formed, a part of which was the Bureau of Corporations, which was allowed to probe businesses engaged in interstate commerce. It was highly useful in trust busting. The 1877 formed Interstate Commerce Commission had proven to be inadequate, so in 1903 Congress passed the Elkins Act, which fined railroads that gave rebates and the shippers that accepted them. The Hepburn Act restricted the free passes of railroads. Teddy Roosevelt decided that there were good trusts and bad trusts, and set out to control the bad trusts, such as the Northern Securities Company, which was organized by J.P. Morgan, and James Hill. In 1904, the Supreme Court upheld Teddy Roosevelt's antitrust suit and ordered Northern Securities to dissolve, a decision that angered Wall Street but helped Teddy Roosevelt's image. Teddy Roosevelt did crack down on over 40 trusts and he helped dissolve the Beef, Sugar, Fertilizer, and Harvester Trusts. In reality, he wasn't as large of a trust buster as he has been portrayed. He had no wish to take down the good trusts, but the trusts that did fall under Teddy Roosevelt's big stick fell symbolically so that other trusts would reform themselves. Roosevelt's successor, William Howard Taft, crushed more trusts than Teddy Roosevelt. And in one incident, when Taft tried to crack down on U.S. Steel, a company that had personally been allowed by Teddy Roosevelt to absorb the Tennessee Coal and Iron Company, the reaction from Teddy Roosevelt was hot. In 1906, significant improvements in the meat industry were passed, such as the Meat Inspection Act, which decreed that the preparation of meat shipped over state lines would be subject to federal inspection from corral to can. Upton Sinclair's The Jungle enlightened the American public to the horrors of the meatpacking industry, thus helping to force changes. The Pure Food and Drug Act tried to prevent the adulteration and mislabeling of foods and pharmaceuticals. Another reason for new acts was to make sure European markets could trust American beef and other meats. These were all these were all laws that were passed to protect the consumer. Americans were vainly wasting their natural resources and the first conservation act titled the Desert Land Act of 1877 provided little help. More successful was the Forest Reserve Act of 1891 which authorized the president to set aside land to be protected as national parks. Under this statute, some 46 million acres of forest were set aside as preserves. Roosevelt, who was a sportsman in addition to the other things that he was, realized the value of conserv conservation. Persuaded by other conservationists like Gifford Pinchot, head of the Federal Division of Forestry, he helped initiate massive conservation pro projects. The Newlands Act of 1902 
initiated irrigation project projects for the western states while the giant roosevelt dam seen in this picture was built on arizona salt river and dedicated in nineteen eleven by nineteen hundred only a quarter of the nation's natural timberlands remained he set aside a hundred twenty five million acres establishing perhaps the most enduring achievement as president concern about the disappearance of the national frontier led to the success of such books like jack london's call of the wild and the establishment of the boy scouts of america and the sierra club a member of which was a man who was a naturalist named john muir in 1913 san francisco received permission to build a dam in the hetch hetchy valley a part of yosemite national park which caused much controversy Roosevelt's conservation deal meant working with the big logging companies, not the small, independent ones. Teddy Roosevelt had widespread popularity, such as the teddy bear, but conser cons conservatives branded him as a dangerous rattlesnake, unpredictable in his progressive moves. However, in 1904, Roosevelt announced that he would not seek the presidency in 1908, since he would have, in effect, served two terms by then. In 1907, a short but sharp panic on Wall Street placed Roosevelt at the center of its blame, with conservatives criticizing him, but eventually the panic died down. In 1908, Congress passed the Aldrich Reland Act, which authorized national banks to issue emergency currency backed by various kinds of collateral. This would eventually lead to the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 and we'll discuss more of the impact of Roosevelt and his decisions and his progressive moves in our classroom discussions this is the works cited page all images in this presentation are from the public domain